the final year-end reports for 2023 are due, and it may be that betting and gaming services provider Flutter is the company that causes the biggest fuss in the week ahead, especially as another firm from the same industry, 888, is due to report its own full year results on the very same day, Tuesday the 26th of March. For many years, the big four firms in British betting were Mecca, Corals, William Hill and Ladbrokes. But the combination of deregulation and technology has changed all of that. After a series of major deals, the biggest British bookies now a flutter through Paddy Power, Betfair and Skybet, Bet365, N10 through Ladbrokes and Coral, the latter of which had already merged with Mecca, and finally 888 through William Hill, with Betfred and a few others close behind. But the UK high street betting shop is just one part of their operations. In fact, not at all in the case of Pet365, and horse and greyhound racing are just one part of that. Sports betting's big business, online wagering is huge, and they all offer online casino-style gaming too. And these firms are also very big overseas in some cases. Flutter Entertainment is present in 100 countries worldwide, with the UK and Ireland, Australia and America its most important individual markets. Indeed, the USA is particularly attractive to betting service providers because it is deregulating the sports wagering markets thanks to the repeal of the 1992 Professional and Amateur Sports Protection Act some six years ago. And it's loosening the rules just as markets like Australia and the UK are either applying higher taxes, tightening them or both. The recommendations of the long-awaited review of the UK's 2005 Gambling Act may finally be published this year, and a further crackdown in the form of stricter gambling affordability tests could follow prior initiatives and pushback on fixed-odd betting terminals, or fruit machines to me, where stakes have already been limited quite substantially. This is why Flutter moved into the US market in 2018 with its purchase of FanDuel, the US sports betting leader, and why it sought a secondary listing for its shares in New York in January. Indeed, the firm will give its shareholders a vote at its annual general meeting in May as to whether to leave the London Stock Exchange altogether and have its primary listing on the New York Stock Exchange. This news has been well received by investors who bid the shares up to new all-time highs in anticipation of this switch, and that's despite admissions from Flutter in November and January that profits for 2023 would disappoint because of the combination of unhelpful sports revolt results, or in other words, favourable sports results for punters, as a number of favourites duly romped in, and also currency movements. Now, these full-year results will need a bit of extra study, because Flutter, which already uses adjusted earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortisation, or adjusted EBITDA as its preferred metric, is switching from the UK IFRS accounting standard to its US GAAP equivalent, It's going to start reporting in dollars, not pounds. And it will also refer to further adjusted EBITDA to align its accounting methodology with how US firms account for compensation that's paid in stock and shares. Make of all of that what you will. But the firm has already provided historic comparable data, so that's something. The alerts for 2023 also mean that any guidance given by Chief Executive Peter Jackson for 2024 may have greater impact than the 2023 numbers themselves and analysts will look to four headline figures in particular. The first is average monthly players. That came to 12.3 million for the whole of 2023, according to January's trading update, and had reached 13.6 million by December. The second is revenues, which January's update revealed had reached 9.5 billion pounds sterling last year. For 2024, analysts looking for revenues to grow by 10% to 10.5 billion sterling. The third is adjusted EBITDA, Consensus is looking for £1.2 billion against £1.06 billion in 2022, with a further 40% increase in 2024 to £1.8 billion, thanks to the ongoing US wagering boom in particular. And the last one is the dividend. No dividend is expected for 2023, the fourth blank year in a row, as Flutter digests the £4.6 billion debt pile associated with its merger and acquisition activity. However, there is a chance that the firm hints at a return to the dividend list in 2024. Thank you for watching. I hope that you and all of your families are well and I look forward to seeing you again next time.